All right, play time's over. Jokers. In today's lighting class, we'll examine important factors to consider when lighting spaces such as classrooms and offices, and why we'd use this type of fitting instead of this one. Here's pay attention and put that comic down. If we remember back to last week's history lesson, we learned that ever since the invention of the light bulb, the lighting industry has created hundreds of ways to light a space, which can often be very confusing. The advent of LEDs in the 2000s added to the complication, and for a while, people thought the different rules applied to LED technology. Now that older technologies are banned on environmental grounds, the only viable light source for lighting a space is LED, and the fundamental rules of lighting remain the same as they always have, but perhaps updated to reflect how we use spaces today. When it comes to lighting a classroom, the important factors we need to consider are the amount of light, the distribution of light, the colour composition, and one other factor. Does anybody know this? Hammond? Yes, it's glare. Well done, Hammond. Clearly, you've been taking extra lighting lessons with Mr. Robinson. I'll leave a link in the description so that you can all improve your lighting knowledge and gain some valuable CPD points to keep the NIC EIC school inspector happy. On paper, these two fixtures look the same. They both produce the same amount of light. The only major difference is glare. When in a classroom or office setting, we need to reduce the amount of glare, as we tend to focus on reading from books or display screens. Excessive glare can cause eye strain, leading to headaches. So choose a fixture with low glare. While the fixture may be labelled with a glare rating of UGR19, as we learned in physics, the actual glare level is influenced by the specific lighting installation. Therefore, the fixture alone does not guarantee low glare. Instead, it contributes to achieving reduced glare within a comprehensive lighting design. Regarding last week's homework assignment about lighting a classroom, you were tasked with creating a lighting plan for a classroom following the SLL recommended lighting standards for primary school setting. Hammond, you've achieved a fantastic result with a glare rating less than 19 by using the Robus Scholar Plus. Here's your scheme as a disaster. The glare rating is more than 27, although you did achieve the correct light levels and uniformity. What went wrong? I copied the lighting layout from my work experience at the Carvalatin showroom. The Robus speed beam is a great solution for general lighting such as workshops, but not ideal for classrooms, so better luck next time. Did you learn anything else from the design assessment? Hammond? Yes, the Scholar Plus features switch selectable power outputs and adjustable light outputs to align with the existing fluorescent tube light outputs, making it perfect for retrofitting. Can anyone name another factor which can help to reduce eye strain and irritation among some users? Oh, Hammond? It's flicker. According to the Robust Scholar Plus data sheet, the fixture has a flicker-free LED driver. Well done, Hammond. Correct again. Choosing a fixture with a flicker-free driver can help eliminate another cause of irritation. No, not you, Hayes. Okay, final design homework question. We've created designs with two lighting levels. Yes, the, uh, the SLL guide sets a minimum lighting level for primary school classrooms, yet the space could also be used for evening classes. Considering older people require more light, opting for the Scholar Plus with Dali dimmable could enable versatile lighting use and aid energy conservation. Hammond, you really have been paying attention in Mr. Robinson's CPD classes. Here's yes, I have a note here from Mr. Gaunt that you performed exceptionally well in the practical test for this lighting installation. Was this down to your skills or the design of the fixture? I must confess that the quick release end caps and screwless loop in and loop out terminals made the process incredibly straightforward. In our biology lessons, we learn that light fixtures effectively attract insects, a common occurrence in older lighting fixtures where bugs would get trapped inside the diffusers. The Scholar Plus offers multiple pre-drilled mounting and cable entry options, all sealed with gaskets to achieve an IP44 rating for dust and moisture protection. The fixture's smooth surfaces make it easy to keep clean. With its outstanding optical performance, versatile power options, and user-friendly installation features, the Robus Scholar Plus stands out as the perfect lighting solution for office and educational settings. Hold on, Hammond. I've been taking a closer look at your homework. It says the design was undertaken by Rory at Robus. Have you been using the free lighting design service again? Well, you did say 
to work smarter and not harder. Indeed, a valuable service for contractors dealing with challenging lighting situations. Hayes, are you eating in class? It says on the video on screen now that lights can make you feel hungry.